welcome to this video and in this video I wanted to have a look at one of the processes that can be responsible for spinning up a pulsar. So firstly let's just have a look at what a pulsar actually is. So any star on the main sequence is in hydrostatic equilibrium. This means that the gravitational force is trying to collapse it are balanced by the pressure force generated in the core where it generates its energy. So all stars will be on the main sequence at some point and at some point that pressure in the core ceases. So what happens is the fusion in the core stops that core then collapses, depending on the type of star that it is, it rebounds and the outer layers kind of contribute to a supernova. So here you've got the, the Crab Nebula and there is a pulsar at the centre of that. So the outer layers is what we see as the supernova and then it leaves behind a stellar remnant in the centre, which is the core, which would have ceased fusion and collapsed. Now, depending on the size of that star, when it underwent this process, will denote what stellar remnant it would be. So for a sun-like star, they're not really big enough to have a supernova. They would basically go through a red giant phase, planetary nebula, and they would expose their central core as a white dwarf. Bigger stars, though, will undergo a type 2 supernova. And... Depending on how big that star is, you'd end up with a neutron star or a black hole. And it just depends on how much gravitational force there is, how much it can collapse. But a pulsar is a neutron star. It's just the way we see it mostly. So pulsars, they are generally fast spinning neutron stars. These can spin up to a few hundred times a second. So these are incredibly fast rotating objects. They have energetic jets that we see as a pulse. So if we were looking at one and it's rotating, one of these jets will basically scan across uh, our observing plane. We see it as a pulse of energy. And that's why they're called pulsars, because they basically we see them as a pulse. And they're about the size of a city, so about 20 kilometers in size. Now just think about that. You've got a city rotating hundreds of times per second there's an enormous amount of rotational energy there so why do they actually rotate so fast to start with well when that core collapses which is what predominantly the pulsar is it's the core of that central star it will have some net rotation to start with but as it collapses in order to conserve angular momentum it needs to spin up so in order to have the same angular energy it will rotate much faster and that's one of the reasons for that now it's not perfectly conserved because you do lose some stuff but this is the general idea as to why they spin very fast and white dwarfs will spin fast and black holes are thought to have some rotation as well but for the purpose of pulsars this is why they rotate so fast now they do slow down over time so the general configuration of a pulsar is that they have these beams, these energetic beams, that are offset from their rotation axis. So the beams are not at their rotation poles, you know, the rotation axis. And as they rotate, they sweep a beam out. So a bit like a lighthouse. And they undergo a magnetic breaking. So pulsars are very, um, have very, very strong magnetic fields. Again, because actually they're a collapsed core, they conserve their magnetic uh, energy as well but this offset in the magnetic axis and the rotation axis causes this magnetic breaking and over time they will spin down so they slow down it causes a breaking on their rotation and, and this is what we see so you've got those beams at the poles the magnetic poles and as it rotates really fast depending on how it's orientated to how we look at it we see a sudden increase in energy which is our pulse and obviously we can work out the, the rotation period by the time between each pulse. So that's basically how we get the rotation. Now that rotational energy, and there's an enormous amount of it that's radiated away due to the magnetic breaking, illuminates the surrounding nebula. So this is the Crab Nebula, and you can see an animation there where that rotational energy is illuminating the surrounding nebula. So 
that magnetic breaker, which is slowing it down in, in rotation, again, there's an, an enormous amount of energy there being lost, and that radiates into the surround nebula, which is then illuminated, which we can then see. So it's a huge amount of energy. So if we were to look at the age of a pulsar and its magnetic field strength, we would expect there to be a downtrend. So that magnetic break-in reduces the magnetic field strength. We get a decay in the field strength. They get older and they basically, yeah. Um, so they get older, they lose their field strength. Simple. They also spin down, which we know. So if we look at the age and their period, so the pulsar period, the time between each pulse, we would expect that to get longer as they age because they spin down so it will take longer between each pulse then so there's a general trend of most radio pulsars that the older they are the slower they rotate the slower they spin due to this magnetic breaking however there's a very obvious group here on this plot which have very short periods but are also very old so they haven't spun down or they don't appear to have been spun down, or could they have been spun up? So the interesting thing about this particular group is that they are in binary systems. These are confirmed pulsars in a binary system with another star. Now, what's happening here is it's likely a giant star that has probably gone red giant phase, and the pulsar is pulling material off that. It then creates a disk around it called an accretion disk, which falls onto the pulsar so that basically the pulsar is growing in size by pulling material off the other star now that can cause a increase in the spin rate so it can spin up a pulsar because you've got that disc which is rotating around the pulsar in order to conserve that angular momentum of the disc when it falls onto the pulsar it's going to spin up the pulsar so you typically find that these pulsars that appear to be spinning faster than the general trend are in binary systems and they've been spun up due to this particular process here where they're pulling material off a binary component, normally like a red giant or something like that or another type of giant star. Now, the Vela pulsar is an example of one that undergoes glitches. So this is kind of like smaller periodic sudden spin up in its rotation rate so it has a sudden increase in its spin rate which then decays again and this is a slightly different process this is due to the way that some of the layers of superfluids internally are behaving so some of them basically will move out and then the other layer will kind of move out and catch up with it and because you're redistributing the internal structure it can change the way that the pulsar rotates so there's an internal process which can change the spin rate and they're known as glitches. But what I will do is I'll do a different video looking at glitches of pulsars um, later on. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.